Kind of feel like a series that's gone on for this long should have some kind of intro. So here we go, here's my laziest attempt. But I'm not adding a laughing track. <laughs> but anyway, welcome back to another view update. This is update number 29 looking at the month of June 2018 for the backers of View Glasses. So picking up where we left off last month, we were looking at some of the issues they were having with the manufacturing of some of the electronic components. This was either due to the manufacturing process or hilariously down to staff just forgetting to do stuff at the factories where they're being produced. Because of that, their initial pre-production run of 40 glasses had a yield rate of 50%. Um, half of them broke, essentially. However, in this month's update, it looks like the number in that pre-production run has been pushed to 104 for some reason, you know, four for luck. Uh, but 104 have gone through pre-production and of that had a yield rate of 98%, which means of the 104, only two had issues. Now, other than the human error that we looked at last month, they've said one of the other reasons for such a low yield rate was to do with one of their manufacturing processes called SMT, Surface Mounting Technology, where they actually place small bits onto electronic boards. Some of the things that were identified with that is that certain components were touching, which were making them short, but now it also seems that the boards themselves were actually not staying in one place. They were kind of shifting around during this mounting process, which meant components weren't going in on the right places, which was causing the number of problems that they saw. Now, as you can see from the pictures here, what they've done to remedy that this month is by actually mounting the boards to a more secure frame meaning that they can't actually shift around while they're going through the manufacturing process. As well as that, in this next picture, you can see there are actually only spaces available to mount in the correct places. So they've now said this process can be used across a lot of the manufacturing and should resolve a lot of issues. However, they have said this is still in their pre-production run of around 100 units. So once they get to mass productions of thousands and thousands, they'll probably come across their own problems then as well, but they'll address them when they come to them. Sorry, there's people talking outside. <sighs> when it's summer, I need to record with the windows open, but there's a lot of sound outside, so I'll shut them and I'll, I'll sweat for a bit, it's fine. It's fine. Next, probably a question that you've had for the last nine months in which we've been making these videos is, Mark, what about the charging cable? For the love of God, tell us about the charging cable. We've got that this month. Essentially, they've started producing their USB Type-C cables in which they've put some view branding on there, which, yeah, it's a, it's a nice little touch. So I mean, in the update there's a few paragraphs that are talking about the charging cable, but I really don't think I can sit here and talk about it with a straight face. So, you know, here's a picture of the charging cable, and just to fill up some time, here's 32 seconds of how they wind the charging cable during the manufacturing process. <laughs> You, you just think about that the next time you open a cable. Some poor bastard probably had to sit there and glue the stuff together like that. Next we move on to the sexiest, most unadvertiser friendly section of the update. Certifications that meet regulatory requirements. God, I really am coming across as a sarcastic arsehole this month. <laughs> So essentially, before viewers are allowed to provide any products to anyone, they need to meet this certain list of regulatory requirements, which essentially of the 104 units which they've just produced in their pre-production run, will be using those to test to make sure that they're meeting all of these. That includes FCC. This test governs the electromagnetic radiation from a product and certifies that it is under applicable limits. CE. This mark indicates conformity with health, safety, and environmental protection standards for products sold within the European Economic Area. ROHS. This is often referred to as lead-free directive, but the requirement also restricts the use of other substances that can cause health and environmental damage. Whee! A European directive aimed at reducing electronic waste and improving rates of recycle. And FDA, registering our facilities and paying the annual fees. 
Essentially, they're saying if you pick up any products that you own at the moment, have a look at the back, you'll probably see at least a few of these stamps to show that the product has met these requirements. Uh, next is an important update to do with any pledges that have been made and any additional charges that may be coming your way if you made any changes to your order since placing it. Uh, essentially, in an update coming up soon, they haven't said exactly when yet, but they need to close off all changes made to everyone's pledges. This is so that they can provide a master list to the manufacturers and all of the components won't keep changing. This includes things like the style, the color, and the lens type. Now, because they haven't closed this off yet, anyone who still does want to make a change to their order can do so by emailing this address right here. Again, this will be things like the frame, the lens, the style, the color. Uh, most importantly for anyone who's ordered the prescription lenses because the project has been delayed by so much, if they wanted to update the lenses, this could be your last chance to do so. However, for anyone who's already made some changes to their order, they've said, to check whether or not you might owe additional money, use view.backerkit.com to look up your pledge. If you email us and ask us to look it up for you, it will clog our support system while our staff answers many more emails than normal. This will significantly reduce the ability to respond to everyone in a timely manner. So if you have made any changes, I recommend you log on and have a check. I'm guessing why you still have charges outstanding, you probably won't get your glasses. So next we do have a small update on the bone conduction technology. It's it's still not what we want. It's still not a video of somebody using the glasses with you know the camera close enough so that we can hear if anything's leaking out of it. However, what they have said is the bone conduction transducers, which they previously received, uh, they've made some modifications on. This is to help reduce leakage and preserve audio clarity. After making the modification, they've done some further inspections and of 12,000 units, only 11 defects have been identified. So the 11 defective units have been thrown out uh, and the others have been provided to their manufacturing partners to go into production now. Uh, lastly, we talk about timelines. So you may remember from a few videos ago, my estimate still kind of lies at around September 2018. Let's see what they've said. So as always this section I just read out so as not to misconstrue any of the information that they give. Now that we've hit our goal yield rate we will proceed to our next batch. As mentioned in a previous update our next target is to finish 1,000 units ideally by July. The goal is to ship these next units to backers. A lot of things will need to align in order to hit this goal. Here is a brief outline of the work that needs to be completed prior to shipping. Perform certification tests for FCC, CE, RO, HS and we. Perform reliability tests, including drop and temperature cycling. Perform assembly trials with assembly factory to improve assembly rate. We'll do our best to communicate updates and timelines as we work through everything. Stay tuned. So that's it again for this month. Again, no solid estimate of an exact delivery date. Uh, just saying if all of the stars align and they're able to complete all of those necessary steps, then maybe the next 1000 unit production run might get shipped to backers. So it still looks like we've got a couple of updates coming our way. Uh, so as always, the question I want to pass off to you, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below, is when do you think we'll be receiving the classes? And also in the upcoming updates, instead of things like, you know, cables and regulatory stamps, uh, what is it you want to hear? What is it you want to find out about? The questions that they haven't answered yet. Obviously my main one still stands. We just want to hear the bone conduction in action. But as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to drop a like. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel for further updates and also other Indiegogo and Kickstarter projects which we look at on the channel here. I'm gonna go open the windows now. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, I shall see you in the next one.